You and I are going to talk. Well, good morning to you, too, Rob. What can I do for you this nice spring day? For starters, you can get the hell out of my life and off my back. Oh, my, my, my. I haven't had your coffee yet, huh? You know, I feel the same way until I've had a couple of cups. Why don't you let me pour? Cream, sugar? You know, Cassie may love your sense of humor. I don't. I'm here for some answers. Well, I can see that. Problem is, I don't know what the questions are. I've learned that you're conducting an investigation into my past. Before I leave this office, I want to know why. You know, Max, this is a big responsibility. Uh, sure you don't want to ask your brother? I wasn't sure Steve and Gabrielle could even make it to the ceremony. Besides, after all we've been through, I, uh, I can't think of anyone else I want to stand up for me. I'm honored. Now listen, you hold on to those things. I was going to give those to you the other day. But you had taken off with Tina and little Quinn up to the cabin. Well, she explained all that to you, didn't she? How I had that photo assignment at the, at the new lodge to cover that. And how she wanted to see Vicky and the kids up at the cabin if they were there. And then she said you had to keep the kid from getting a chill. Chill? You had to make a fire so he could keep warm? Yeah. Yeah, it was really cold up there. Hey, yeah, we took some great pictures while we were there. We talked and we, uh, well, we settled a few things and just lost all track of time. Cord, it's okay. I know everything that happened. You do? Mm-hmm. Tina and I don't keep any secrets from each other. That's why, before we get all caught up in this wedding, something I have to say to you. Well, I'm certainly going to be with you in spirit, Tina, but uh, I'm afraid I won't be able to come to the ceremony. I'm leaving for Greece this afternoon. You are? I, I think it's going to be wonderful for you. I do, and I'm sad that you're not going to be here to share in probably the happiest moment of my life, but I feel you made the right decision. Well, actually, Elena made it for me. Seeing her and, and realizing that I could help her, I couldn't refuse. Well, I do think it's going to be great. And how are you getting there? Are you going there on, on Mr. Danakos' private jet? <laughs> I hear it is fantastic. They're picking me up this afternoon. You know, I uh, called Aces this morning to get a hold of Cord, but apparently he'd gone off to run some errands. If he stops by, will you let me know? I want to say goodbye. Yes, I'll tell you the moment he arrives. Thanks. Well, I should really go finish packing. Uh, Tina, I really hope today is everything that you want it to be. And I wish the same for you and your new job. But we made it, just in time to say congratulations, Tina. I'm telling you it's a damn conspiracy, Buck. I've got everything I can think of. To keep Jenny here in town and nothing works. Not even removing a, a nut from one of the wheels of her stagecoach. That was you? <laughs> yeah. Little Simmons said some cowboy reported the stagecoach turned around, come back into town, repairs. Talk about a desperate man. Well, that's me, all right, desperate. And I heard the news about that stagecoach coming back, but it's, there's no sign of it yet. If Jenny doesn't get back here soon... Uh... There you are, Quinn. I just ah. wanted to thank you for last night's hospitality before I say goodbye. Goodbye? Yeah, my work's done, and I'm uh, catching the westbound coach. Should be here within the hour. No! Now, damn it, Randolph, you just can't leave town yet. Friend, there's a whole railroad line that needs building all the way back to San Francisco. You can't expect me to delay construction any longer. Of course not. When here would be the last man in the world to stand in the way of progress. Buck Buchanan, uh, Randolph Lord. What a pleasure. Buck, would you excuse us for a moment? Uh, I need a word with Mr. Lord in private. Sit down. Randolph, I'm gonna, I'm gonna level with you. I have good reason to think that Jenny is returning to, to town. It seems they've had a problem with, uh, with one of the wheels on her stagecoach. Jenny, huh? 
Yes. Now, I told you yesterday how she'd come through town on her way to St. Louis, and she'd missed her connecting stage. Well, now it seems that there's a problem with this stagecoach that's forcing them to, to turn back. Well, doesn't that tell you something? Now, maybe the fates are, uh, are conspiring to bring you and Jenny together again. We don't get second chances in this life, Clint. Maybe six months ago, I might have waited for Jenny's return, but, well, last night, I put Henriette on the midnight coach heading west. Well, I, I, can't, uh, I can't say I'm sorry to hear that. If I did, I'd be a damn liar. I mean, she wasn't right for you, Randolph. She wasn't right for you at all. Well, you'll get no argument out of me for that. It's just that it took me so long to see it. No, I'm a man who's better off living alone. No, you're not. No, no, no. Now, Jenny Fletcher is nothing like, like Henrietta Simpson. Nothing at all. I mean, Jenny is, is sweet and kind, and she's bright, and she's funny. She's also the woman who spurned me back in San Francisco. Oh, yeah, but she's changed. Now, yes, she's, changed, she's a female. Right? Well, yes, she is. And yeah. I've had enough of them to last me a lifetime. No, you have not. I'm sorry, Clint. Now, when Jenny returns, you just tell her I'm... Tell her I'm sorry I missed her. Tina told me what you said to her up at the cabin about your giving us custody of little Clint, and I gotta say, next to my wedding, that's the best news I've ever had. Yeah, well, I've always said I want to do what's right by my son. And since he's been separated from his mama for so long, I, I think that this is best. Well, that's what we want, all of us. And I think it's a great idea of you having him on weekends and some of the holidays. As far as I'm concerned, you can see him whenever or wherever you want. And that doesn't bother you? Should it? Well, some men would think that that would be driving a wedge right in the middle of his new marriage. Court, I know Tina loves me. And I know she's going to do whatever she has to do to build her life with me and with our kids. Not just Clint, but our own kids, too. I just hope when you find that special person that you let me share in your joy, too. The way we want you to be with us today. You know something, Max? Uh... You've come a long way from being that two-bit hustler from the hometown that I grew up in. I think you turned out okay. Thanks. Let me some, say something. Uh, for being uh, starting out as a dumb hick cowboy, I'd say you come a long way <laughs> too, Cord. Looks like we're stuck with each other for life, buddy. Well, I consider myself being fine company. And you asked me why I asked you to be my best man? The smartest move I ever made. Gabrielle, I'm so happy to see you. Uh -oh. I was afraid you wouldn't be able to make it because of, you know, problems on the ranch. Well, we left the small problems behind, like the leaky milking machine and the broken fence. Well, and the other problems? When Steve and I flew back to Arizona last week, Al slept the entire time on the plane. Plastic food and a bad movie left time for us to talk. Well, a good talk, I hope. Well, we certainly didn't hold anything back. I listened, he listened. By the time we touched down, we had made up her mind to definitely make this marriage work. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> I'm so happy for you, I am. And I hope that if Max and I ever have problems, that we will work just as hard to get them straightened out as you two are. You're not expecting any problems, are you? Of course not. In fact, everything is perfect right now. Ooh. Tina, what a beautiful ring. I love it. Oh, thanks. Max got it for me in Venice. Oh, he's such an incurable romantic. Yes. Miss Max was always very good at making... making a woman feel like she was the most important person in the whole world. Yes. Well, that's exactly what I feel like right now. In fact, well, I can't wait for you to see my gown. <laughs> well, you look very happy. But when I came in, she... you were looking at Cord's picture, you seemed in a very different mood then. Well, I was rearranging, you know. I mean, there's going to be a lot of people coming into the house today, and I want it to look just right, and... By the way, where's, uh, where's Al? Did you get a sitter for him? Tina, this is Gabrielle, remember? If you were thinking about your ex-husband, it's only natural on a day like today. I wasn't thinking of him. I almost never even do that. Never? What are you getting at? I mean, do you think for a moment that I don't want to marry Max? I didn't say that. But seeing the way you're overreacting... <laughs> I'm not overreacting. <sighs> Look, I'm, I'm a little nervous. I'm getting married today, and I really don't need my best friend questioning my motives. 
I'm not doing that. I'm just asking you, are you sure that Cord is completely out of your heart for good? Of course I'm sure, or I wouldn't be marrying Max, now would I? Tina, you can convince yourself of almost anything. But you're not the only one involved here. There's Cord, there's Max, there's a baby, and there's... There are so many other people who could be affected by what happens today. Don't you think I know that? Like, why are you being so hard on me today? Because I'm your friend. And if a friend can't tell you to face the truth, no matter how painful it is, what good are they? Look, the truth is that Cord is my past. And Max is my future. Don't tell me. Look into your own heart. See the truth. This may be your last chance. You came to Cassie and me. You asked us to help investigate your father's death, am I right? Yes, but damn it, John, I didn't ask you to stick your nose in my private life. Well, unfortunately, your private life and the life of Alex Crown were tightly connected. So I have to look everywhere, including your shrouded time in Europe. Shrouded? What the hell is that supposed to mean? What it means is that since you've been back to Landview, you've had very little to say about where you were, who you'd been with, and what you did during that three months on the continent. That's my affair. Yeah, it was. Until you brought me in on a homicide case. And if you want me to find your father's murderer, well, I just might have to step on your tender sensibilities a little bit. Unless, of course, you'd rather the killer got away. Don't you try to put this on me. I brought you into this case because I thought you could give it a little dedication and objectivity. Obviously, I was wrong. You are so jealous over my past with Cassie, the only thing that you are dedicated to is finding some reason to keep her away from me. You know, I think somebody wound you a little bit too tight today, Sonny. Now, why don't you get out of here so the grown-ups can get back to work? You work for me. You answer to me. Oh, don't tell me that you think your lousy retainer gives you the right to come in this office and chew me out for your little adolescent fantasies. Uh-huh, sure, you are so much older and wiser. Is that why you can't stand the thought of Cassie wanting to help me? Let me put it this way to you, bub. Maybe your mobster daddy lets you go around and bully and bluster to get your way, but it won't work here. So you go try it on guys with bent noses and names like Lefty. You shut up about my father. I will when you leave Cassie the hell alone. You're the one who can't leave her alone. What is going on here? Cord and I will always be close. I mean, we have a son. But as far as my love is concerned, Max is going to get all the love I have to give. I could use all the oh. hugs and kisses I can get without Vicky here. Oh, yeah, well, I come bearing very, very good news. Vicky called bright and early to say that she and the kids are coming to town. And I quote, I will not miss my sister's wedding for all the snow on Mount Lontano. Ah, you know, she called me too. Just last night, asked, and the kids and her got my note that mm -hmm. I left for them. And she's on her way here. See, Gabrielle, it is just like I said. Everything is going to be perfect. It certainly seems that way. And Wanda Wolek has little goodies in her bag. For you, uh -huh. and for you. Oh, they're lovely. <laughs> okay, that's the blue, and that's the old, and you can take care of the new and the borrowed. Oh, well, I think I can help you there. Oh, I have something. Yes, this is nice. Oh, oh, a locket. My father gave that to me many years ago. I used to always wear it until Steve gave me a necklace for Christmas, but I carry it everywhere I go. I'd like you to have it. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, now that we've taken care of everything that you need, I'm going to go back to the house and get ready for your wedding. Please make sure she doesn't get too nervous. Yeah, I will do my best. <sighs> Gabrielle, thanks, and uh, I'll see you in the church. Yeah. Wanda, it's exquisite, isn't it? I wonder if she has a picture of her father in it. I bet she does. I mean, despite all the rotten things he did. Let me see. Randolph. I may look like just another cowboy to you, but uh, the thing is, I have this gift. 
Now, you call a second sight if you want to, but I can see into the future. No, no, no I mean that. Now, I, I know things that are going to happen even 100 years from now. And you have a wonderful married life, and you have a wonderful married life in front of you, Randolph, with, with a lot of kids, uh, children, you know, generations of lords who are going to live good lives and do important things all the way from here to the Atlantic. Why are at it, Clint? Why don't you tell him who's going to be next president come November? <laughs> <laughs> That's quite all right, sir. I appreciate the prophecy. And uh, I trust when the right woman does come along, I'll be smart enough to know her and uh, just make this prediction come true. If you, uh, you already know her, Randall. Ginny Fletcher. There you go again. I'll indulge a harmless prophecy, but I will not be made a figure of fun. I am not making fun of you. I'm not making fun of you at all. I'm just trying to get you to see what's in store for you if you'll give Jenny another chance. What are you, a matchmaker or a prophet? It's a good question, sir. And I have need of neither. Uh, wait, wait a minute. Now, just hold on a minute. If you want details, I'll give you details. You marry Jenny, and you will settle in Pennsylvania. Your descendants will help found a town named Landview. You'll start a newspaper. You'll bu they'll build a fine home called Land This Fair. is pure idiocy. I hate the East. I have no intention of settling there. Some prophet you are. If I were you, sir, I'd stick to three-card money. Good morning, one and all. Fine day for travel, isn't it? Julius, Ju do you mind? I'm trying to talk the man out of leaving. You've tried and failed. Besides, I've invited Mr. Jones to accompany me back west with his retinue. For which I am eternally grateful. San Francisco may be the golden land for us all. Excuse us. Julius, if you don't mind, just uh, a small word here in private with you. Look, Julius, you want gold? I'll give you gold. Now, I need your help with that little magic, uh, that magic crystal or whatever it is. But you gotta help me keep Randolph Lord from leaving town. Today, there's an eye drop that fights redness better than Visine. It's called OcuClear, and you can see the difference eye to eye. The Visine eye shows some red. The OcuClear eye is clear. The difference is clear. OcuClear fights redness better, longer than Visine. OcuClear. Presenting a delicately seasoned taste of Lipton chicken rice and sauce. Delicately prepared for you by Lipton, with a rich chicken stock simmered inside. So delicious. So simple. Chicken flavor rice and sauce. One of the Lipton side dishes with that delicately seasoned taste. Even though Mom can't see me, she knows I'm okay. At Play School, we know you want to hear your baby everywhere. So we make our Play School baby monitor truly portable. It's the only one that plugs in in the nursery and also lifts out to run on batteries anywhere so you can move the monitor instead of your baby. Play School's Baby Monitor. Uh-oh, better call Mom. Wow! Isn't this great? <laughs> Headaches, backaches, muscle aches and pains. Millions of you experience this kind of everyday pain. And you should know that the pain reliever that's unbeaten for ailments like these is Tylenol. But it wouldn't make any sense to relieve your pain and then irritate your stomach. That's why you should choose a pain reliever that won't cause the stomach irritation possible with aspirin or even ibuprofen. That's why your choice should be Tylenol. It's tough on pain, easy on your stomach. On General Hospital, Duke's been taken by the mob. You just sit back and enjoy the ride. You're being too hard on Duke and he doesn't deserve it. Can you explain his uh, disappearance this evening? I don't have to explain it. Not aiming to yourself? I trust him. Traffic's pretty heavy tonight, huh? Don't worry, we'll be at the theater in plenty of time. I'm not about to let you miss this curtain. Duke's been set up. I gotta get to the theater fast. No, I'm going with you! Will Duke be caught in the crossfire of a mob war? On General Hospital, weekdays. Sean, stop it! Stop! Wait a minute, now both of you stop it right now! Now you hire 
hired this firm to investigate your father's death, a job we have both taken very seriously. So what right do you have to come busting in here and start attacking my partner? I don't believe it. Forget him. Your partner is not interested in finding my father's killers. All he wants is to turn this investigation out on me so that you'll keep your distance. Oh, so all of a sudden you are an expert on the procedures of a private investigation. I know when a man is trying to hold on to the woman he loves. John is a professional, Rob. I can't believe you're defending him. Neither can I, but I'm not complaining. I can't believe that you are so paranoid about a file. Unless, of course, you really do have something to hide, Rob. Oh, come on, Cass. You've already grilled me about my past. Did you find any skeletons in my closet? I have my methods, and John has his. We respect each other's approach. What about me? I thought you respected me, too. I do. But not when you come in here and act like a baby just because you don't get your own way. Listen, I fought for a principle. I fought for you to try to get this jerk to stop treating you like his possession. But if that's the way you want it, fine. You conduct your investigation, and I'll do mine. <laughs> brava, brava. Well, I never thought you'd see the light about that guy. Thanks for defending my honor, sweetheart. Your honor? I think you are about the lowest form of life on Earth. Oh, 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 I can't tell you how good it is to see you here after all the things we said about each other. Uh, well, the anger was mine, Max, and I'm here to say I'm sorry. Hey, I'm as much to blame as you are. I never should have offered to loan that money to Gabrielle without talking to you first. Listen, if you still think I should take it back... No, 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 no. Gabrielle and I talked about it. Now, you gave us that money to help us both. So if her dress design business gets off the ground, who am I to say no? Sounds like you and Gabrielle have been doing a lot of discussing this past week. Well, we've never been closer, Max. That's why she's just as happy as I am to be here and share this day with you and Tina. Now I know everything's going to come off without a hitch. I'm going to have my brother there with his loving wife, and if I can get on this stupid tie, yeah, all right, maybe all right. you can Hold come still. with me. Hold still. All right, all right, all right. You know I'm bad at these things. Now, what do you mean, come with you? You don't have to be at the wedding for a while. I'm not going to the church. I'm heading over to land fair. You see, uh... I want to sneak a little peek at the bride-to-be okay. before the ceremony. You sure you want to do that? What about tradition? You know me better than that. <laughs> I hate tradition. I got to break at least one rule today or I won't feel complete. Come on here. I think the best way to do it is take a little gander at that gorgeous little beauty I'm getting married to today. <laughs> Great. If you want to drop it with superstition, you go right ahead. Suit yourself. Thanks for the tie. Mm -hmm. How do I look? Like a man that's about to have seven years of bad luck. <laughs> so, Tina, I wanted to come by and see if you needed anything before we got ready and headed over to the church. Well, I don't think so. I have something old, something borrowed, something blue, and something new. So, I can't think of anything I left out. Your hair. Oh, my goodness, I forgot to do my hair. <laughs> whoa, 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 Tina, wait a second. Before everything uh, gets all exciting around here, uh, I wanted to say something. Uh, listen, I... I want you to know that I wish you and Max only the best of things out of life. And I know that the two of you together are going to raise our son well to be a fine young man. You know, Tina, I feel right now that the horizon is going to be nothing but sunny for us, for all of us from now on. You always have known just the right thing to say to me, and I'll say it. Thank you, Cord. Cord, Harry told me that you... Oh, I'm sorry. If you're busy, I can come back later. No, no. Hey, Sarah, what's going on? Uh, why aren't you dressed for the wedding? And, and what do you, do you have the suitcase for? I think we'd better go upstairs and fix your hair now. But I got a few minutes. Excuse us. Well, no, sure. I think we should do it. Excuse us. <laughs> I take it Tina didn't tell you. What? Look, Sarah, what's going on? Are you going on some kind of vacation after the ceremony? Cord, I'm not going to the wedding. I've accepted Mr. Donakos' offer to work with Elena. I'm leaving for Greece this afternoon. I guess this is goodbye. Julius, don't play coy with me. Now, last night you pulled one of your tricks and you managed to get Randolph Lord to see the light about his greedy fiance. So pull one more of your tricks and keep him here in town. Clint, Last night, I was a confidence man, a trickster, if you will. But today, I am legit. 
I have decided to hitch my wagon to Mr. Lord's. <laughs> Mr. Lord is a railroad tycoon. You are a two-bit confidence man. Past tense. Despite your skepticism, I have always aspired to the ease and comfort, not to mention the money, of an honest businessman. Mr. Lord may be my one and only chance. I don't believe this. I don't believe this, Julius. I was counting on you for just one more favor. All right. I'll just have to do it myself. Uh, Randolph, I... I apologize for coming on so strong about, about Jenny. It's over and done with. Mr. Jones, shall we step outside and wait for the stay? Uh, the thing is, I have something to offer besides a, a wife. Now, with my power for prediction, I can see things about the railroad business that will make you millions. Mr. Buchanan, as um, even someone as yourself may discern by the cut of my coat, I already have millions, and I intend to make more without your highly dubious advice. Mr. Jones. I am right behind you, Mr. Uh, Lord. Well, Randolph, just two more minutes. That's all I ask. Clint, Clint, save your breath. If I was you, I'd say good riddance. Yes, well, Buck, if I don't get Ginny and Randolph Lord together, we may be the last of the Buchanan line. What's going on here? Just two seconds ago, you were defending me to Rob, and now you're turning on me. Yeah. You are not the only one around here who is a professional, you know. I gave Rob the official party line because somebody had to defend the integrity of this office. Oh, well, excuse me, my dear, but I don't need you to protect my integrity. I was doing just fine in that department until you... Oh, right. Trading blows. Yes, that is very mature, I John. told you he started it. Well, you provoked him. I what? Yes. You and that stupid file of yours. If I was him, I'd want to punch your lights out, too. I got news for you. It wasn't that file, toots. It was that cockamamie idea of his that I was using it to keep you close to me because I'm eating up with jealousy. He didn't mean that. He just, he said it out of anger. What makes you so sure? How do you know that I'm not a, a volcano of jealous rage just waiting to erupt? Cut it out, John. You know that you don't have any reason to be jealous. No? Well, what about that kiss? What kiss? What kiss? The kiss that Rob planted on you at the Holden Towers? Yeah, I saw that. And don't tell me it was just a peck on the cheek. Actually, it was Elena. I mean, Cord, when I realized that I could make a difference in her life, well, I just couldn't turn my back on that. You understand that, don't you? Sarah, it's no secret how important your work is to you. And working with Elena is going to be a wonderful challenge, and I'm sure you're going to love every minute of it. There's no way you could have turned something like that down. I just can't help feeling that... Feeling what, Cord? I'm sorry, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to tell you how much I will personally miss you, or I'm not going to try to talk you out of this again. You're not. Well, um, that's, that's very nice of you. I want you to promise me something, though. I want you to promise me that you're not going to stay over in Greece all the time. We have really gotten used to having you around here, Sarah. I, I promise you I'll come back to Landview as often as I can. And I'll, I'll send you postcards. Good. Uh, I'd like that. Uh, I mean, I would really like that. Excuse us, oh. Sarah, but the butler said to go right in. Uh, Mr. Dinarcos, Elena. I'd like you to meet Cord Roberts. Hello, uh, Cord. How do you do, Elena? Uh, Mr. Dinarcos, it's a pleasure to meet you. I want you to know that you have gotten yourself the best therapist here in the whole wide world. Cord, I agree with you. I can't wait for us to get home to Greece and begin our work together. Yeah, if we ever get home. <laughs> well, listen, I'll tell you what. The airport is only about a mile or two down the road from the church that I need to be at. So I will take you myself and drop you off. Oh, that's so nice of you. But you are the best man. I mean, you can't be late to the church. Well, you're right. I'm the best man, so that means I can fly like the wind. And I'm very punctual, too, so I will be there. And I'll even tell Heron where I am in case anybody starts to worry. Listen, that way you can give me your address and your phone number so I know where I can reach you. And that way I can give you a proper send-off. Let's hurry then. It's getting late. Okay. 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 Let me get your bag here. Thanks. Medium. Burger with the works. There are lots 
lots of burgers America goes out for, but there's only one burger with the taste America comes home for. Ma it was just a kiss, John. There were no fireworks. The earth did not move. It was just two friends letting their, their feelings show. Oh, really? Well, that's funny. I don't remember kissing my old friends that way. Look, you are deliberately misinterpreting this whole thing. Oh, by all means, interpret it for me. Okay. We were reminiscing. People who are married and divorced tend to do that. Ah, uh, I see. Reminiscing. So you just uh, sort of reminded him about the silly little bubbles he used to make in the bathtub, and he reminded you of the way you used to burn toast, right? Oh, that's... All right, it was a little more personal than that. Okay, we were having an intimate conversation. Intimate? Yeah. Well, now we're getting somewhere. Not intimate, intimate. It was sentimental. Rob started to feel sentimental, then I started to feel that way, and one thing led to another, and we had a friendly kiss. It was as simple as that. Oh, do tell. I'm a PI, remember? I don't need a polygraph to tell me when someone's dancing around the truth. All right, you want the truth? Yes, we were together. Yes, sparks flew. And yeah, we cashed in on it, and it happened momentarily, and it ended as quickly as it happened, John. Believe me, any feelings that I feel for Rob have nothing to do with you. He is my friend. That's it. So you say. Well, it's too bad I can't tail you and find out what I've really been missing. I won't even dignify that comment. Oh, you won't or you can't? I have to go home and get ready for Tina's wedding. I suggest you do the same, unless you want me to go alone, which I will. Oh, who is it? Flowers. Why didn't Helen tell the fellow to just wait downstairs to put the flowers downstairs? Well, maybe it's my bouquet from Max. Wanda, would you mind? No, of course I'll get it, but you get behind the screen. You don't want to give a delivery boy any cheap through this. Go ahead. Okay, young man, I'll accept them. Okay. Hey, oh, 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 you men. Oh, oh, you oh, oh, Max, you did it. Yes, I did. You think a silly little tradition is going to keep me away from you? Come on, baby, let's have a kiss. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, come on, Wanda. I brought the bouquet personally. I think that, that deserves a kiss. <laughs> Wanda, if he wants a kiss, then you give it to him, and you tell him to take those flowers and put them in water on his way out. Is that any way to talk to your future husband? Oh, what? Yes, yes, it is. You heard her, and you better get used to it. Now, you heard the lady. Take your posies and beat it. Wait, well, I'm sorry. I'm not leaving without my kiss. Max, don't you know it's bad luck to see the bride before she walks down the aisle? Now, you don't want to have our, our marriage doomed before it even starts. I don't believe this. What? Max Holden's going to be forced to do this the old-fashioned, traditional way? Conventional way, yes. Now, yes. just get out of here and go prepare to pose yourself on the wedding okay, cake. Okay, 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 okay. I'm going. I'm going. Your bouquet will be out in the hallway. All right? This is the last time we do it your way. Oh, dream on, Dumbo. Out. <laughs> Impossible, absolutely impossible. Oh, I know it. <laughs> Isn't it great? Glenn, I'm, I'm, I'm trying like hell to understand you, but you're not making it easy. All this talk about Buchanan's yet unborn, I mean, how can you be so sure of that? Because I... Just because I'm sure, that's all. You see, when I, I think... When a man is so hog wild about matchmaking, I think that man himself wants to get hitched. I've told you, I'm already hitched. The last thing I want is another bride. All right, there may be, but uh, ever since you came to town, it seems to me you're looking for unattached couples to get them hitched. Look, May and Cody, man and wife, thanks to you. Same with Blaze and me. And now you're trying to pair up a couple of strangers who don't even belong in this town. I have tried to tell you why, Buck. They belong together, not just for their own sake. I know, generations not yet born. I know I heard the speech. Uh, look, Clint, can a, a distant relation uh, offer you some advice? I kind of wish you wouldn't. Well, it, it seems to me, even if you have a family somewhere, you ain't going to find them. Maybe you should stop trying and settle down here in Buchanan City. Don't get me wrong about this, Buck. Because I like it here, I really do, but it's not my home. Well, you know, give it a chance. It's got your name, isn't it? 
Or do you think that place is a lot greener where you come from? No, no, it isn't that. But my family must think I'm dead by now. I got to get back to them. I know what you got to get back to, Clint. Life. Now, Blaze can introduce you to the finest women in this town when you find the white right one. Good teeth.